Hello everyone, we are doing module 2 on memory hierarchy. This is uh, lecture number 4. In today's lecture, we are going to look at 6 basic cache optimizations. And if the cache is optimized, it will perform better and help the overall uh, performance of the computer system. So, to address any optimization issue, we need to understand what are the different parameters which are in our hand to change, right. So, the performance of a memory hierarchy is defined among other factors mainly by the average memory access time. That is how long did you take to go and read the memory uh, to bring the data to the processor. So, when processor has a request, that request of a read or a write has to be satisfied by the memory hierarchy. If it is found in the cache, good enough. If it is not found in the cache, it has to go to the next level cache or to the uh, main memory to bring the data. Okay, so, uh, the performance or rather when the program runs, you will have several accesses, some may be found in the cache, some may not be found in the cache. So, we uh, average all of this out and then declare the average memory access time for a given program and the short form for this is called AMAT. So, AMAT is defined by uh, the given formula on the screen. Uh, it is the hit time. So, whenever uh, we find the data into the cache. So, uh, the time to go to the cache and find out if it is there. So, that is the hit time and if you do not find the data, then we have to go to the next level. So, in case of misses, we use the miss rate and then followed by the miss penalty to handle these many misses. Okay, so, AMAT is hit time plus miss rate into miss penalty. So, that is the formula for average memory access time. And this uh, formula is giving us a framework to optimize the cache performance. So, we have these three uh, parameters hit time, miss rate and miss penalty and very obviously uh, if you look at the formula, if I reduce the hit time, I reduce the miss rate, I reduce the miss penalty, overall the AMAT will reduce. Now, how do you understand each of these parameters because once we understand the components of each of these three terms, we will be able to optimize on them. Okay, so, in this slide we are going to see how that is. So, uh, first we will see the hit time component. This is a cache, uh, the blue table here. You can see the cache index, it has got 8 entries, the tag and the data. So, when we come with an address to this cache and before we declare a hit or a miss, that whole time spent is called the hit time, right. So, we come from the processor with an address, it can go directly to the cache or go through some address translation and then it uh, enters the address decoder. So, it has to go to the decoder and identify which index it matches to and once it matches to a given index, then we have to bring out the tag of that entry then do a tag comparison. After the tag comparison, if it is a set associative cache, you will also encounter the mux delay to select which of the 4 or 5 ways, uh, 4 or 8 ways to select from and then finally transfer the data. So, this all adds up to the hit time of the cache. So, if the there is a hit in the cache, this is the amount of time I am going to spend. If there is a miss, then we need to spend more time. Now, how do you uh, calculate the miss rate? We had seen a formula earlier, miss rate is the percentage of accesses which miss in the cache. So, this is the number of misses divided by the total accesses. Okay. So, miss rate is the uh, percentage of the number of misses divided by the total accesses. Okay. Then whenever there is a miss, if we, if there is no hit in the cache, then you need to spend time going to the next level of the memory to bring the data. So, miss penalty first come to the cache, search in the cache. If it is a hit, give the data. If it is a miss, then you have to go all the way to the next level. And I would draw a longish line here because there is lot of delay uh, between the next uh, lower level memory and the cache. So, this delay, so you first go, then you have to read the data there, then uh, come back, write the data inside this. So, that is called loading the cache, right. So, you load or allocate that block inside the cache and then send the data to the processor. So, whenever you encounter a miss, 
first you have to go to the next level of memory bring the block and store the block in the cache and then transfer the required contents to the processor again when you store the data into the cache you need to see that the cache has space or it doesn't have the space and accordingly uh, run a particular method to establish this okay so there's lots of work happening to uh, cater to a, a miss so overall uh, the foundation of improving a cache performance is the amat and we want to con uh, we want to concentrate on reducing the miss rate reducing the miss penalty and also reducing the hit time of the cache okay so what are the options available to us this slide is just summarizing the information but we will see each of these in detail to reduce the miss rate we have got three options one is you can use a larger block you can use a larger cache or a larger associativity three options for the miss rate for miss penalty we have two options using multi level caches and giving priority to reads and for reducing the hit time we wish to avoid address translation while indexing the cache so uh, we'll see all the details during this lecture okay as our objective in the first one we are going to see this here our objective is to reduce the miss rate so let us see the uh, first let us see what are the causes of misses misses are normally uh, called the three c's model why three c's because each miss starts with the alphabet c so if i classify the misses the first type of a miss is called compulsory miss as the word says compulsory no matter whatever is the situation this is this miss is going to happen so any first time access to a block is always going to miss into the cache because it is not there in the cache so you have to go to the next level and bring the data into the cache so this type of a miss is also called all those accesses which will miss in a cache of infinite capacity right so even if you have a large enough cache the first access is always going to miss so these are compulsory misses and the second type of a miss is capacity miss capacity miss as the word says your cache has got limited capacity uh, suppose you can store eight blocks and you want to access 16 blocks so the newer blocks will obviously not have space in the cache so because of this you will when you bring a new block the old block has to move out and that causes capacity misses because you cannot contain all the needed blocks into the cache okay so here if we are using a direct map cache suppose i have a direct map cache and this is the address and a new value e wishes to come and sit where a is sitting what would happen this a will get removed and e can sit here whereas there was empty location in other places so i won't call this as a capacity miss because the cache has three empty locations but still a had to go out so capacity miss will be defined only when there is uh, no free space left in the cache and therefore we categorize or we uh, label them as those misses which would also occur in a fully associative cache so if this box was a fully associative cache then the e could sit anywhere here and would not result into a miss so capacity misses occur because of smaller cache capacity and they would also occur in a fully associative cache the third type of a miss is called conflict miss now conflict misses occur in set associative or direct map cache as we saw here when the new e wanted to come a had to be removed because it was a direct map cache the same situation can occur in a set associative cache where suppose this is my uh, set 0 which has got two options so a and b is sitting here and now e wants to come and sit somewhere here inside the set so even if there are empty locations in set 1 i am not permitted to sit anywhere in set 1 because the block is targeted to s0 so when e comes a or b will have to move out and such type of misses are called conflict misses they occur in a set associative or a direct map cache they are also termed as collision misses because the blocks kind of collide with each other and move each other out they are misses in any set associ n way set associative cache so th that is conflict miss so this is the 3c's model the compulsory miss the capacity miss 
and the conflict miss. But recently, we have a fourth C coming into picture, which is called the coherence misses. And in this uh, subject, we are going to encounter this more and more because these happen due to the multiple processors running multi-threaded shared programs. So when uh, programs share data, a program would have cached a data item in its local cache and the other program wants to access the same data item. So when the other pro process or other thread wants this data item, it has to be removed from this thread and given there. So we are uh, causing more number of misses because of this coherence uh, maintenance issue. Okay. So the, that is the fourth C that is the coherence miss and cause because multiple caches need to be kept coherent in a multiprocessor environment. So we have seen these four causes of misses. Now uh, we will move to the optimizations. Okay. So the first optimization to reduce the miss rate is use a larger block size. So very intuitive um, to reduce miss rate meaning all accesses which are going I should get as many hit sets possible. So to get more hits in a cache your block should be big enough. Because if your block is big, because of spatial locality, we would have brought in more data already and there are high chances that the newer data items will be found in the same block. Okay, so I can have a larger block to reduce miss rate. So this is clear, but is this effective? Okay, so now you imagine you have to go to the next level and bring a larger block. What would uh, it incur? It would increase the miss penalty because you have to go to the next level and bring more amount of data rather than only one data item which you have missed upon, right? So this increases the miss penalty. It also increases the conflict misses. Now, how does it increase conflict misses? Conflict misses occur when you're uh, in a direct map or a set associative cache. So given that we had a cache of a fixed capacity. So I will just uh, proportionally draw this. So this was the cache capacity and for smaller blocks I could fit these many blocks here but if I increase the block size I could fit very few blocks. Okay. So I have almost doubled the block size and I can only fit 4 blocks here whereas maybe here I was able to fit 8 blocks. So when you have 4 blocks or lesser blocks and associativity so you will increase conflict misses because new blocks will remove older blocks. So it increases conflict misses. Then there is no benefit in this option if it increases the AMAT because when your miss penalty increases, the average memory access time will also go up. So what do we do? The solution for this block size depends on how much is the bandwidth and latency available at the next level because the main target is um, controlling the miss penalty of this large block. Okay, so as miss penalty is increasing because I am bringing bigger blocks, I need to worry about uh, how much effort I am spending in bringing this large block. Okay, so if your next level is giving you high bandwidth at the cost of little high latency. So if you have high latency and high bandwidth at the next level. So if I draw it here, this is the cache and that's the next level. I'll just call it memory directly suppose. So this is the link I'm uh, discussing about. So this link between the cache and the memory, if it has high bandwidth and it has higher latency, so this would encourage me to bring larger blocks. Why? Because of the high bandwidth in one go, I'm able to fetch lots of data. Okay. So with little more miss penalty or a little more latency, large amount of data can be brought in. So let us be uh, greedy and bring more amount of data because we have good bandwidth. The other option is if your bandwidth is low, that you can only bring small amount of data in one trip, then better bring small blocks, don't increase the block size. So we would bring smaller blocks if I have lower bandwidth. Right. So suppose I was uh, going to bring a larger block which had both data items A and B. To bring this, I will need two trips. One trip to bring A, the second trip to bring B. So is it required to make two trips and bring both of them? May not be because let me first bring A and then if B is required in future, let me bring B because the miss penalty of a small block 
how much are you spending small block has got some miss penalty and i have to make two trips so that's approximately equal to the miss penalty of bringing a block which is twice the size right so this is uh, the statement here so twice the miss penalty of a small block that is I'm going to spend two trips to bring the small blocks is approximately same as bringing uh, a bigger block which is spending double the amount of uh, time. Okay, So the overall time is same. So let me bring a small block if required the second block can be brought. Okay, So that's about having larger blocks. Now having a larger cache very intuitive have as big cache as possible because after the compulsory misses you won't uh, encounter many misses more often. So obvious way to reduce the miss rate is have a larger cache. Now what is the drawback with this? Drawback is larger the cache more the hit time. Then more costly because uh, the faster memories or the cache memories are expensive and also power hungry. So it is going to increase the hit time and also have more cost then power will also go up. So we don't want to do this immediately, but we can do this for lower level caches because lower level caches can uh, afford to have a slightly higher hit time and therefore we can use this optimization for lower level cache. The third of a method of reducing the miss rate is using higher associativity. So why higher associativity? Because in a direct map cache, we just have a single option to place a block, right? It will only sit here and nowhere else. So if already A is sitting when E wants to come, E will remove A and sit in the place of A. If I increase the associativity and I say that uh, these two blocks form the one set, so even if A is sitting here, if I increase the associativity, then E can also sit here because this is the same set. So in a direct map cache, this is not possible. But in a set associative cache, there are more chances that the block will get alternative options to fit into the cache. So this reduces miss rate. So with experimentation, people have found that uh, you can increase associativity. So the greedy approach will be why not have a fully associative cache? Because in this example, I said I had uh, a two-way set associative. A was sitting. When E comes, it sits in another place. Suppose two more blocks come. So where will they sit? Right. So they would definitely increase the miss rate by removing A and E. So how, why not go for a four-way associative? Why not go for an eight-way associative? And hence, a fully associative cache. But with a fully associative cache, your search time increases because you have to scan through all those entries to see if the block is there. And then even the replacement policies become more uh, complicated and time consuming. Okay, so fully associative cache is expensive in terms of hit time. Hence, uh, people have experimented and found that an eight-way set associative cache is as effective as a fully associative cache. So if we have eight-way, we are good enough. Right. So, 8-way is as effective as a fully associative cache. And the second rule of thumb is that a 2 is to 1 cache rule of thumb which says a direct map cache of size n has the same miss rate as a 2-way set associative cache of size n by 2. Okay. So, I will uh, illustrate it here. So, the purple color is a direct map cache with 8 blocks. So, this is a direct map cache with n equal to 8. I have 8 blocks kept here and this is a two-way set associative cache, two-way set associative cache where number of blocks is equal to 4. So this is the set, this is block number 1, 2, block 3 and block 4 and these 4 blocks are divided across 2 sets. So this is n versus n by 2, so 8 versus 4 blocks and direct map versus two-way set associative. So if we double the associativity, then we can half the cache size and this both designs will give me the same miss rate. If you see the addresses mapping, the first set is mapping address 0 and 2, the second one is mapping 1 and 3. So when uh, 4 and 6 come, so 4 will also be housed here, 6 will be housed here and so on and there are uh, experimentally people have found that 
this arrangement is giving almost similar miss rate as this arrangement. Now is this valid forever? Definitely not. This uh, property uh, is known to be valid for smaller caches that is only up to 128 kilobytes of cache. So, if you have 128 kilobyte cache sizes then we can exploit this property beyond that it may or may not hold. Okay. So, overall for the miss rate what have we seen? We have tried to increase the block size but we in increase the block size miss rate definitely reduces but the miss penalty increases. Then we tried increasing the associativity, associativity increases the hit time right. So, miss rate is improved but hit time increases. And if you have a faster processor, you have more gigahertz in your processor, it wants to access data quickly and to access data quickly your hit time should be very small. Hence the cache design should be simple, it should not spend more time searching for the block. So, for faster clocks you need a simple cache, but at the same time to control the miss penalty you have to manage the associativity at the same time. Okay. So, to summarize let us see the effect of the 3 C's. One is that the compulsory misses were reduced by having a larger block, but having large blocks uh, does not give benefit forever, it is less effective. To reduce the capacity misses we have gone for larger cache sizes and for reducing conflict misses we can increase the associativity. Okay. So, now what happens if you change the cache size? So, when the cache size increases or the for the same cache if you increase the block size the type of misses move from one type to the other. So, changes in the capacity will also have effect on the conflict misses and so on. So, a capacity miss gets translated to a conflict miss and vice versa uh, depending on what you are doing. So, maybe capacity misses reduce but conflict miss increase and uh, something similar impact will also happen. So, these three optimizations are very much interlinked. So, techniques that reduce miss rate increase the hit time or increase the miss penalty. So, if I am saying the miss rate is reducing, it is indirectly increasing the hit time. So, you take more time to hit and more time to fetch the block. So, the miss penalty also increases. So, just optimizing one is not sufficient, we need to seek a balance among all the possibilities to achieve a best AMAT. Okay. So, with this uh, we finished uh, three optimizations, in the next lecture we will see the remaining three optimizations. Thank you. Mm -hmm.